Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a very, very huge episode of Motor City Wrestling. We are live here in Long Beach, California for episode 172 of Motor City Wrestling. And like I said, we have an, an absolutely huge show ready for you guys here tonight. Starting things off is our first of three championship matches. That's right, three championship matches tonight. Starting things off, like I said, we got Duncan Jones and Tyler Van Diver. They're going to go at it for the European Championship. After this, we're going to switch things over to the women's division momentarily as Donna Kay and Roxanne Graves team up against the Babies. Mid-card match of the night following that one when the Campbell Club take on the Kiwi Buzzsaws and Deuce in a handicap match. Uh, Izzy Phelps and Selena Dominguez facing up for the U.S. Women's Championship after that and of course our main event of the evening. Los Hermanos Rodriguez taking on strength and power and blood money in a triple threat elimination tag team match where the winners will walk out as the UPWA Tag Team Champions. for the price of one shot. You fucking know it, dude. Uh, so I'm glad you took a bit extra to start the show up uh, because I was fighting for my life on the john. Yeah, no, to be honest, what held me up was uh, setting up... Well, first of all, I had to fucking set up the, um, like, tag team for Los Hermanos Rodriguez because they're... Pedro and Marco are part of the greater La Armada del Medico faction. So... Uh, the thing is that, like, as Texico, Lopez and Santos, they're the actual tag team for the group. So I had to go ahead and switch things around and make Los Hermanos Rodriguez the tag team so that we could have the title match, because the universe is fucking weird. At least that's how it was in TK19. I can't imagine they fixed it in 22. But, uh, that took me a fucking while to do. Plus, I had to make a custom match for the main event tonight, just, just to add the elimination stipulation on Fucking love WWE. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get our, ma our uh, first match of the night going. Though, like I said, we got Duncan Jones and Tyler Van Diver set to clash one on one. So let's go ahead and get to it. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the European Championship. And I just want to take a moment to uh, officially welcome not Greg Hamilton. Congratulate that man real quick on his first announcement for a title match. Of course, we know that JoJo gave three and a half years of her life to this craft. Incorrectly naming titles back on 2K19. Sometimes forgetting what they're called, just leaving entire words out of the title. But so far, I have to say that not Greg Hamilton is doing a fantastic job saying those whole two words, European Championship, correctly. Yeah! Not Greg Hamilton, I'm not a peeing European, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Alright, but I digress, Duncan Jones earned this opportunity against Tyler Van Diver two weeks ago by knocking off Oxley in a number one contenders match under some controversial circumstances. But he got the win nonetheless, and so tonight he will face Van Diver for the European Championship. Not the first time that Duncan Jones will be facing Tyler Van Diver for a title either. I'm fucking stupid. I'm sorry, Yanny. I, sh I should have got that. <laughs> anyway, the Golden Star, Tyler Van Diver, now making his way down to the ring. Looks like he'll be accompanied by Blood Money here tonight. Oxley and DGX. Oxley, of course, has a beef with Duncan Jones. Was defeated by Jones two weeks ago, like I said, under controversial, cir uh, under controversial circumstances. When uh, Jones got the three count, despite Oxley grabbing the bottom rope, which should have forced a break, unfortunately for the Brisbane Bruiser, referee never saw it, and he counted the fall. 
But then last week, Oxley had another chance to get into this matchup when he faced Tyler Van Diver one on one. But things would not go his way once again when Pedro Rodriguez interfered this time, costing him the opportunity. Notice down that Tyler Van Diver is 23 years old, like the song said, because whatever the song says must be true. See, I'll be honest, that's the one thing I don't really like about the song. The fact that it specifies that he's 23 years old, because I, I don't think Tyler Van Diver is supposed to be 23 years old. Jordan will have to correct me on that if I'm wrong, but... Either way, that's what it's all about, the very prestigious European Championship. Introducing the challenger from Brooklyn, New York, weighing in at 197 pounds. Duncan Jones! Duncan Jones entering this matchup ranked at number 12 on MCW's records, number 20 overall with a record of 67. From Palm Beach, Florida, weighing in at 228 pounds, he is the European Champion, Tyler Van Diver! Tyler Van Diver, meanwhile, is has eight wins and three losses here so far in 2022. Ranked at number 5 on MCW, ranked at number 9 in the UPWA overall. Tyler Van Diver also has held the European Championship for a total of 67 days as he enters this title defense. And this is a win that Tyler Van Diver needs to pick up, not just to keep the championship but also to cement himself as a great European champion. I mean, the last time that we saw Tyler Van Diver, well, uh, the last time we really saw him on a major stage was back at Soul Survivor when he faced Cody Gray in a champion versus champion match, but he was unable to pick up the win over the World Hardcore Champion. Van Diver really needs to rebound off of that loss with a successful title defense here tonight. But like I said earlier, this is not the first time that Tyler Van Diver and Duncan Jones will go one-on-one -on -one for a championship. Last time these two faced off was back at end of the line last year when Tyler Van Diver was the UPWA champion defending against a more cocky and less experienced Duncan Jones. But about a year has passed, over a year has passed, I want to say, since that encounter. Duncan Jones has grown up quite a bit since then but you have to wonder if he has gained enough experience to knock off Tyler Van Diver here tonight so far it's not looking like a Van Diver just schooling Duncan Jones in this one now has that side headlock applied once again transitions into the headstand once again cranking up the pressure on that headlock looking for a stomp Jones rolls out of the way goes in and a flatliner taking Van Diver down Van Diver right back up to his feet though, kicks to the gut from Jones, and off the ropes looking for a blockbuster. And still not finished, drops the knee across the face. Oh, and a super kick taking Van Diver down, and I also have to, have to uh, bring up the fact that Oxley and DGX are at ringside here tonight once again. Now Oxley says that he is here to protest this European Championship match that he feels that Duncan Jones does not deserve to be in. And jo uh, Oxley does make a fair point, given the controversial win a couple of weeks ago as Van Diver goes for the cover off of Golden Keys, but only a two count. But you have to wonder if Oxley is going to get physically or even mentally involved in this contest and try to cost Duncan Jones the win. Van Diver off the ropes looking for a moonsault. Not going to happen. Jones rolls out of the way. Now picks him up. No, looking for a Hurricane Rana. And now picks Van Diver right back up. Looking. No, wait. Able to counter Van Diver. There takes him down to the Famouser. Now picks him right back up. Into the tie up. But Van Diver with a kick and a couple. No, wait. Got blocked. Duncan Jones with a slam dunk. Now the cover. Will that do it for the Golden Star to win the European Championship? Only a two count. Duncan Jones cannot believe it, but he has to collect himself. He has to keep on going in this match if he wants to win the European title. Van Diver setting him up here, but Jones 
trying to block, punch to the midsection, a second one, and a third, breaking up the hold. Yo, what's going on, Nightmare? How you doing, brother? How's my, how's my favorite E-Fed uh, fam doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good, man. You are catching us on a fucking big night. We have a massive show here tonight. As the title says, we got three title matches. Duncan Jones, or Tyler Van Diver looking to win the very first one here tonight. Golden Keys once again. Will that do it for Jones? No, only a two count still. But now Van Diver could be looking for the exclamation points. Lifts him up. And, oh! Going for the cover now. Will that be it for Jones? And that's all she wrote. Tyler Van Diver picking up the win with Golden Eye and is going to retain the European Championship as a result. Duncan Jones, he fought hard, but he didn't fight well enough. I thought Duncan Jones was going to do an overdrive and then Johnny from New Legacy was going to feel a disturbance in the force and feel really mad for some reason. To be honest, I wouldn't fucking care. I asked the old close-up of the challenger not believing that move wasn't getting sold. <laughs> I hate to say this, but let's go fuck, let's fucking go Van Diver. Uh, fought hard, but comes up short. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Duncan Jones, he's a great athlete, but tonight he is not greater than the Golden Star. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go ahead and move on to our next match of the night. Coming up next, we are going to switch things over to the women's div I just clicked on the wrong fucking thing. There we go. We're going to go ahead and switch things over to the women's division as Donna Kay and Roxanne Graves get set to team up for the first time to take on Sarah Baker and Amanda Nightblade in what has been a very grueling rivalry this past month. But now we're looking to get our conclusion to this one. Uh, let me go ahead and take the bets out real quick. I'm going to guess Yanni Ben on Tyler Van Diver. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yes, you did. There you go right there. Uh, let's see. Let's give credit to Blood Money for doing absolutely nothing. Hey, they, you know... They hung out. They protested. Women's wrestling. <laughs> That's fucking weird. Dude, why do you uh, not promote, my, promote yourself in my Discord, bro? Uh, it's because I don't know where to, dude. <laughs> That's why I was asking you like a fucking uh, month or so ago. Like, did you get rid of your fucking one channel? Uh, yeah, going live. Yeah, but but Nightmare. Let me, hang on. Let me show you something. Let me remember. Hang on a second. Uh... Alright, let me fucking get rid of this for now. Let me fucking minimize the damn. Uh, hang on. What am I looking for here? This is my goddamn, uh, fucking screen share thing. Or I can't finally go ahead and just do one of those. With it. Hello, I guess I'm too Uh, but yeah, like, you see this shit? I don't have permission to fucking post, dude. <laughs> That's why, like, I don't fucking, uh, do the thing, you know? Like, I don't have, uh, fucking permission to. <laughs> Uh, post that channel. That's why I don't promote myself. <laughs> That's why I was so confused like a month ago when I DM'd you. Like, yo, where did you get rid of your fucking channel or some shit? Uh, let's see. Where was I? Let me fucking open up Elgato again. There we go. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm changing that right now. <laughs> for sure, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it, brother. Uh, imagine not having permission. I have permission. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Man. You and your goddamn permission. But yeah, like, I was, you know, I was a bit confused, like, I, uh, asked you, like, did you get rid of the channel or something, you said you still have the going live one, but I figured you knew that it didn't have, that I didn't have permission to fucking post in there, so I didn't, like, dig further with that, you know, I didn't want to risk, like, pissing you off or anything like that, because I, you know, like, it, it, you know, it's just fucking hard to read people over text, you feel like, but, uh, let's see. Are we going to go ahead and get our next match going right now, though? Uh, no, I didn't know. Yeah, I, I figured that by now. <laughs> now, you're all good, though, dude. Don't even worry. Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get our next match going right now, though. Roxanne Graves, Donna K, set to team up for the first time, like I said, taking on the Bakers in tag team action. Let's go ahead and get to it. I know, bro, but like, I don't know, I've, I've, 
had a history of fucking pissing off bigger streamers before, you know? It is one of those things, like, you, you don't really pick up on it, and then they don't like you so much. And I don't know, it's just, it's just a fucking anxiety of mine, I suppose, you feel me? Also, not Greg Hamilton going to not announce Donna K for some reason. Not entirely sure what that's about. But I know one thing for sure, and that's that we're getting the bets going right now. Donna K, she's been the victim of these Baker beatdowns over the past month until Roxanne Graves made her debut on MCW and made the save for Donna K a couple of weeks ago. Still no ring announcement. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Well, that's them. I'm not your. Uh, I'm not big. You're my fam, bro. You're more than uh, welcome to promote what you do. I appreciate that, brother. I really do. And also, I really do. Uh, I didn't get a chance to mention this at any other point, but I really do appreciate. I noticed, uh, like a few weeks ago, I noticed you fucking gave me a shout out in that channel. Fucking telling people to try to get me up to 250. And I really do appreciate that as well, fam. And yeah, I can message in there now. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You know, matter of fact, let me go ahead and test it out. Let's see here. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Dude, not Greg Hamilton's just not doing shit now. I was praising him earlier for his excellent job announcing the European Championship, but now he just doesn't want to do his job anymore. Do we need to get JoJo back? Gre Greg doesn't like women? Who the fuck is Greg? I don't know who this Greg character is, but I'll tell you what, this not Greg guy, I'm not, I'm not so sure if he's the right guy that we want to announce for the EPW, if he is just going to disrespect our women's division like this. Alright, let me go ahead and get back into the story of this matchup. So, last month, Donna Kay arrived on MCW as part of the trade between MCW and the XTW. But she was not welcomed very well as Sarah Baker and Amanda Nightblade made their intentions clear of sending her back to the black and red brand. Now, since then, Donna Kay, she's picked up wins over both Bakers, but they have still not been receptive to the Rockstar. Instead, have chosen to beat her down after those matches. And a couple of weeks ago, Roxanne Graves made her debut on MCW by attacking the Bakers, helping Donna Kay out and evening the odds. Last week, Roxanne Graves would go on to score the win over Amanda Nightblade in singles action, but tonight... Roxanne Graves and Donna Cade team up for the very first time to take on the Bakers in tag team competition. Now Greg Hamilton needs to get out of the, out of company and get replaced by not 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 Greg Hamilton. Get out of our company. Yep, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, let's see. Here. Just like the MCU. Wait, ref from MCB being cousin of the uh, XW refs, is that a thing? Is that lore? Sarah Baker trying to force Donna K to tap out. Not going to happen though, K with a knee, and now a couple of kicks here, looking for a forearm. These are just going back and forth, Donna K. No Nightblade now in control, K back in control with a kick, and a drop kick taking her down. I've always loved your content and your community, you do, you. I appreciate that man, I really fucking do. Like, that honestly doesn't mean a lot to me, dude. <laughs> nah, I fucking appreciate the love and support that you've always given me, Nightmare, and I hope I hope that I'm able to reciprocate it well, as well as I fucking can. Sarah Bake, a couple of elbows to the midsection. Now a club. No, wait a second. Oh, knee driven right into the fucking skull there.
read the comments on that. Wait, before that, on the way. What? Wait, what does that mean? I'm confused now. <laughs> read the comment before that. I don't know. Uh, back to the match here. Roxanne Graves with a jawbreaker taken. Read the comment before that one? Is that what it's supposed to be? I'm oh, I'm, I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> Read the comment before that one. Uh, let's see. There, I'm sorry. Do, you know what? You know what it is, Nightmare? It's the fact that you and I both have blue names. So I keep, if I see your name next to mine, like for the betting or some shit, I just, I guess I just assume it's fucking part of the best or some shit. Uh, F yeah, bro, dude, I know you supported me for our mixer days and you're the only one from those days that hasn't done me wrong. Be fan, bro, 100%. I appreciate that, man. I've, I do my best, you know? And I know you do your best, too. Man, the fucking mixer days, I fucking miss mixer, honestly, dude. I'm still sad that they fucking shut down Mixer. Like, Twitch is fucking awesome. I'm glad that I can actually get some money now from streaming. But, God, I fucking miss how nice Mixer used to be, dude. And I miss the fucking... just smaller community of 2K streamers back then. Like, now we're mixed in with all the people from Twitch, which ain't a bad thing, just... I don't know. I just like the old days. I'm nostalgic, I guess. Hey, what's good, Brian? Uh, Gavin would never give us the, uh, this high quality of a match. <laughs> Brandon Murphy for XW. Yeah, I don't know about that one, but Sarah Baker looking to put an end to Roxanne Graves' night here with that Baker driver, Donna K, breaking things up. Sarah Baker quickly getting rid of her center over the top rope and refocuses her attention back on Roxanne Graves as she stomps away at the hand here. I'm going to pick Graves right back up, looking for a right hand. Graves responds with the forearm. Up against the ropes goes Baker. And over the top rope, down to the floor. Roxanne Graves gets deposited to ringside. Tag made back to a man and I blade now. Can go to the outside. What's Nightblade thinking here? Well, just wait a second. Nightblade and Donna K meeting inside the ring. Donna K not even legal. But going to take Nightblade down with that clothesline. And now Roxanne Graves looking to capitalize with a rack bomb. And now into the cover, going for the pin here. But only a two count. Roxanne Graves hitting a devastating Bronx bomber there, which I was just searching for, Yanni. <laughs> I'm surprised Donna hasn't went after Sarah Baker yet. Well, I mean, technically she did at the start. They both did start off the match. Nightblade picking Donna K back up, looking to bring her into the corner. No, wait, maybe not. But well, she's going to pay for that mistake. Donna K able to fight free from the hold. Kicks in the gut from Nightblade, however. Now a couple of rights. That one gets blocked, turned into a hip toss. And now tag is made to Sarah Baker. Donna K crashes and burns. She didn't quite get all of it. But Sarah Baker looking to take advantage. Launches K over the top rope. Onto the apron. And now unloading with these clubs across the chest here. I mean, when neither of them are legal, my bad. Fair enough. Donna, what the hell was that? You know, I would like to ask the same fucking question. Quick stomp to the ankle. Donna K back up to her feet, though, and looking to take her down to the Hurricane Rana, and now unloading with these right hands. That was some SmackDown versus Raw Jeff Hardy shit right there. <laughs> she got some of it. Get Donna in for a concussion protocol. No, it's okay. She didn't take a, she didn't take a closed line. She's all right. Donna K to the outside once again, breaking up the referee's count, but Sarah Baker is going to bring her right back inside. And now Donna K makes that tag to Roxanne Graves. Baker, though, with a stiff right hand, now trying to grab hold of Graves, who breaks free from that hold. 
And now it's Graves trying to bring Sarah Baker into the corner. Does exactly that. Forearm chop, forearm chop, forearm and a chop. And now unloading with the rights. Now stomping away. Roxanne Graves coming unhinged. And now Graves once again has Baker by the hair. Brings her into the corner. But a quick back elbow able to fight out of her opponent's corner. And now a belly to belly side slam. Tag made to Amanda Nightblade. Dude, holy shit, I actually managed to get Twitch Clips to work on my app to capture the literal stage dive. <laughs> Fair enough. Graves with the counter, hip toss taken, Nightblade down, picks right back up, and brings her back down to the jawbreaker. Now Graves walks over and makes that quick tag back to Donna K. It's been a very competitive tag team match between both these uh, duos. We've yet to see very many pin attempts. It doesn't seem like any of these ladies want to end the carnage, but Donna K may be putting an end to it here tonight with that stage dive going for the cover and only a two count. Going to pick Baker right back up to her feet. Takes her down to the stunner. And now up to the top, turnbuckle goes Donna K once again, but crashes and burns as she attempts that splash. Now gets launched over the top rope, down to the floor she goes. And Nightblade just, un just slamming her head first into the floor, unloading these right hands now. Seemingly trying to crack that skull open. Tag team wrestling. Uh, okay, bud, got to get some sleep. Uh, gonna leave a tab open up for you. Y'all enjoy the show. Much love, fam. Hey, you know what? Uh, you enjoy your sleep, brother. I hope you sleep well tonight. Hope your bed is very comfortable. I hope you don't have to fluff your pillows very much. Uh, but yeah, man, I always appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you leaving a tab open for the extra view. And I just hope you have a fucking great night, brother. Catch you later, catch you next time you join the streamer, next time I pop into one of yours. Oh, Donna K. Take Nightblade down. The snap suplex gonna pick her right back up. Women's tag team wrestling. Never heard that chain before. Women's tag team wrestling. Bit of a, mouth, a mouthful, but uh, it's all good. To be honest, I wish I uh, could catch a whole show. No, I, <laughs> I get it, dude. We fucking stream pretty late. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, you should, y'all should see this other dude that I just uh, fucking caught the other night. His name's Trademark Music. Dude fucking streams at, like, 2.30 a.m., And he's got a pretty sizable audience, too. Like, that's, that's just fucking impressive. <laughs> now, dude streams so fucking late, though. I've only been able to catch one of his streams. Well, it seems like a pretty good guy. Oh, Sarah Baker just trying to KO Donna K. With that forearm to the back of the head. Now lays her out with that side slam and follows up with a very southern uppercut into the cover. Now hooked to the outside leg to put an end to this matchup. But Graves going to break things up. Which only the mightiest of pillows. <laughs> can you get a break the barricade chain? You know, I really wish that we fucking could. But I don't think that you can break barricades on 2K22. Donna Kane falling on her face. Name a more iconic pair. Oh, Donna K with the Sage Dive once again going for the cover. Will that be it? Nightblade and Graves occupied on the outside, but only gets a two count. XTW and some random ass chair. Fair enough. Donna K now unloading these right hands into the knee of Sarah Baker. Gonna pick her right back up. And launches her over the top rope and down to the floor below. One, 
Makes the tag out to Roxanne Graves. Both Baker and Nightblade laid out on the outside. And Graves has her attention focused on Nightblade. That's going to cost her. Baker sends Graves back inside the ring. But Graves quick to get back up to her feet. Still Nightblade trying to capitalize. Gets taken down off the hip toss. Runs right back in and just decapitates her with a clothesline. Can't break barricades, huh? The amount of disappointment. Honestly, dude, it's so fucking stupid. It's so stupid. Hang on, setting her up. Oh, what a lariat there. Going for the cover now. But Sarah Baker breaking things up. So you can just hear Roxanne Graves terrorizing Amanda Nightblade outside the ring, honestly. <laughs> Although I really couldn't tell who it was until Sarah Baker got thrown outside. Yeah, that's a lack of ring awareness for you, Yanny. I mean, Roxanne Graves is something new to the world of sports entertainment. She went for the cover off that Roxanne roll a moment ago, but she was so close to her opponents. Her inexperience got the better of her there. But Donna K looking for the cover now off the stage drive. Will that do it for Nightblade? Yes, it will. K and Graves pick up the win. She wears green to represent how green she is. Yeah, with each match, she wears a little bit less green. Ignore the page now. Brendan, if you're going to talk shit about Gavin Thompson, at least spell his Here fucking name right. Wait, who the fuck did uh, K just pin? Did she pin Sarah or Amanda? Here are your winners, Radio Silence. Dude, not Greg Hamilton is really fucking pissing me off. I'm not even gonna lie. Honestly, I can't tell which is Nightblade, so... Wait, what the... You can't tell who's who? I personally think they're very distinguishable from one another. Who has the jean shorts? Well, Sarah, uh, Man and Nightblade wears jeans. I don't think they're shorts. <laughs> they just go into her boots. Yo, what's up, uh, Mama Rex? How you doing? Love from the Nightmare Slash Reaper fan. Hell yeah, glad to have you here. And glad to see some more representation from, uh, the Nightmare fam since Nightmare himself, since Reaper had to fucking, uh, go to bed. <laughs> Alright, so Nightblade got pinned. Alright. Let me fucking just go ahead and get that down real quick. Alright, uh, let's see, what am I forgetting here? I'll go ahead and pay the bets out in a second. For now, let's go ahead and move on to our next match of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Our mid-card match of the night, if you will. Coming up next, we have a handicap match between the Campbell Club, the Kiwi Buzzsaws, and Deuce. Let's see, where's the bets? The Bakers did not win. Donna Kay and Roxanne Graves actually got the win. Let me go ahead and pay y'all out for that real quick. There you go. I'll pay you guys out three. That was a fucking good ass match right there. I can't even lie. Wait, that was match number two? Oh my god, that match was that good. <laughs> Yeah, this series fucking packed, dude. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Like, since XW has the pay-per-view this week, MCW just got a fucking whole lot of uh, rivalries that are wrapping up tonight. Rivalries and championship matches. We should defo have a women's pay-per-view that totally won't bomb like Evolution. Yeah, I'd be fucking totally glad to run a women's pay-per-view with our, like, 15 women I think we have on the roster. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sounds like a fucking perfect idea. A very swell 
ID right there. Alright, let's go ahead and get her fucking match going right here. We got the Campbell Club taking on the Kiwi Buzzsaws and Deuce. Let's go ahead and get that switched over real quick. There we go. Five triple threats, easy. Alright, still no announcements from not Greg Hamilton. But the Campbell Club have been going to war with the purebred athlete Deuce. Ever since the end of Soul Survivor. This all started when Deuce, uh, while he was talking backstage about how he was upset that Johnny Nightblade defeated him for the UP3 Championship at Soul Survivor. Drew Campbell had... The same opportunity two nights later. A shot at the UP3 Championship, but he also came up short. But Drew Campbell noted to Deuce that he wasn't getting upset about the loss. He accepted like a man, and Deuce took offense to this. Later that night, night Deuce and Drew Campbell went one-on-one, -on -one, where Deuce was able to pick up the win. The following week... By the way, Brendan, you still ain't got his name right yet. <laughs> the following week, Cody Campbell would take on the purebred athletes, and he would be successful after putting the big man to sleep in the Border City stretcher. Upset about the loss, Deuce actually went and challenged the Campbell Club to a two-on-one handicap match that he would go on to lose. But after the match, he talked about how eager the Campbells were to accept a two-on-one handicap match. But what about a two-on-three handicap? After that, the Kiwi Buzzsaws came out, re-emerged, made their first appearance on MCW by taking out the Campbell Club. And now tonight, the Kiwi Buzzsaws will make their in-ring debut for the blue and white brand as they team up with the purebred athletes. Oh, you did not just fucking call him Byron. You son of a bitch. <laughs> and here they are for the very first time on Motor City Wrestling. The Kiwi Buzzsaws. Now, the last time that we saw these two competing in the ring was back at Soul Survivor when they were still contracted with Extreme Takedown Wrestling, facing off against the Block Party, facing off against the Block Party, the Bakers, and Strength in Power in a elimination fatal four-way tag team match. Does your name have an accent? No, it's not an accent. It's not an accent. <laughs> it's just a very unique spelling. Unless it does have an accent. You never fucking told me that, Brian. Now, the Kiwis were unable to pick up the win in that uh, elimination fatal four-way matchup, but that seemed to be their final night in the UPWA until they re-emerged on the blue and white brand last week. Much to, I think, everybody's surprise. But now they have aligned themselves with a purebred athlete who has so far dominated Drew Campbell out of the gate. And now, Drew Campbell faced to go up against an even bigger athlete in the form of... Oh, big... Wait a second. I don't think the referee saw that. Drew Campbell going low, but Devin Porter trying to shrug it off. All right, I never knew about that fucking reversal. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, let's see. Also, now that the Kiwis are officially officially rehired and on UPW programming, I just want to officially say fuck Sean Golden. He took the music at 2K19, and then he took the music uh, and TJ Solo entered to 2K22. I thought that was honestly kind of funny that of all the fucking of all you guys who could have been using Sean Golden's theme song, it just so happened to be Sean Golden for 2K22. 
Or it just so happened to be uh, the fucking Kiwi Bow songs. Out of all you guys to be using one of my one of my theme songs, it had like it had to be Sean Goldman in the Kiwi Bow songs. I guess is what I'm trying to fucking say. Like the fucking odds of that happening again, basically. Uh, let's see. So what you're telling me is Goldman is a heel now? Goldman's fucking been a heel since Soul Survivor. It's hard to explain. Uh, it's English is taken too literally uh, from not so perfect English. Goldman has always been on the heel, been the heel in the uh, career trajectory of the Kiwi Buzz saws. How the fuck do you not see that must be the next step you're off? Dude, doesn't matter where the fucking refs are, they suck on both shows. You saw what happened to Oxley two weeks ago, right? That was on MCW. Tag not made to TJ Porter. Looks like Drew just gonna run the whole gauntlet as he faces off against all three members of this trio before making a single tag to Cody Campbell. Thus far, I have to say the Kiwis and Deuce have done a great job at isolating Drew in this contest, essentially making this into a three-on-one handicap match. TJ now has a camel clutch locked in, trying to force the submission, but Cody, right there to break things up, Deuce taking care of business, gets rid of Cody Campbell for the time being. Launches him over the top rope, brings him down to the floor. Drew trying to keep his focus on TJ as best as he can. Meanwhile, on the outside, Deuce just continues his assault on Cody Campbell. Drew Campbell off the ropes, taken down. TJ with that tornado bulldog. As the Orin 08 Sierra ref scared of bumps. Campbell kick. Going for the cover is, is uh, Drew, but no, rope break, I think, going to get the better of him there. Tries for the cover again, further away from the ropes, but the, TJ able to kick out before the count of one. And now setting up out of the corner, looking for a front flip DDT. Still not finished though, goes to the top turnbuckle. Not sure if that's a good idea with Deuce right there, but nonetheless, delivers the frog splash. Into the cover goes Drew. But Deuce right there to break things up. Canadians are weird. Do you think that Brian's Canadian? I mean, he could be. I'm not going to rule out the possibility. Oh, Devin Porter with a massive spine buster. And Drew Campbell just unable to get a tag to Cody at all in this matchup. Trying to mount an offense here against the big man. Not going to happen. No, maybe. Able to create some separation and finally makes that tag. Lots of history between the Campbell Club and the Kiwi Buzzsaws as well. Let's not forget that back when the Kiwi Buzzsaws initially debuted on uh, Extreme Takedown Wrestling, their very first match was a match with the uh, World Tag Team Champions, those being the Campbell Club. Just trying to fucking go ahead and reference something real quick. Give me one second here. Off the top rope, misses the fucking double axe handle. Never mind. Going for the cover now. Will that be it? No, only a, a one count. Now, like I said, back. Well, last year when the Kiwi Buzzsaws made their debut, they did so against the Campbell Club and actually defeated the World Tag Team Champions at that time, earned, them, earned themselves an opportunity at the gold, but it seemed like their career trajectory was all downhill from there. And the Kiwi Buzzsaws, they have not forgotten about exactly the negative effect that the Campbell Club have had on their career. So when they saw an opportunity get back at them last week they did not hesitate to take it oh Cody Campbell thought there was water in the pool but Devin Porter able to get out of the way and make that tag to deuce talk about a rude awakening tag made back to Drew and Drew catches him looking for a flatliner deuce a couple of elbows to the side of the head able to break things up knife edge chop has him up against the ropes and now using that top row to his advantage, 
sort of snap him over that top rope to choke Drew out. And now, oh, a massive one-handed spine buster. Drew's now setting up out of the corner. Looking for a massive gore. And now the cover has that outside leg hooked. But Cody Campbell right there to break things up. Devin trying to take care of him, get rid of him. As Deuce delivers Deuce's wild. Now the pin attempt has that leg hooked. And that's all she... No, wait a minute. Drew Campbell somehow able to kick out there. I mean, I, if he... I mean, if he is, then I think Storm and Stasia could form a tag team with him. Exodus missing out on some topless Devin Porter since they chose not, <laughs> not to give him a good enough contract. And speaking of topless Devin Porter, my god, just trying to kill Cody Campbell on the outside. Oh, what a pounce there from, De from Deuce. Not going to pick Drew up. Drew trying to use his quickness to his advantage, but Deuce ultimately catches him, sends him into the corner. And now shoots him off the ropes. And once again just pounces him. Wait a minute. Drew doing his best to crawl to his brother. Now going to go for the cover. Will Deuce. But Cody breaking things up before the count of one. And now Cody trying to get himself some of big Devin Porter. But he's only drawn the ire of Deuce. No, wait a second. Escapes out the back door. Pulls him in for a neck breaker. Cody doing his best trying to buy Drew some time to get back up to his feet. And takes advantage of the distraction. Off the ropes with that bulldog. And now Drew looking for a double stomp to the midsection. Tag made now to Cody Campbell. And Cody just goes right for the pin. But only a one count. Devin Porter with the top and Devin Porter without the top. Same animal, different beast. <laughs> Oh, able to block that. Deuce going for a swing there. Instead gets caught with a face buster. Cody off the ropes with a boot to the side of the head. And a spinning heel kick taking the bigger man down. And now from behind setting up. Oh, what a forearm just rocks the purebred athlete. Picks him right back up though. And pulls him in for another neck break. And now Deuce is the one trying to crawl away. But Cody... With a double stomp to the arm. Now going to drag him away from the ropes there. Stomps to the arm. Wait a minute. Cody Campbell set him up. Looking for the Border City Stretcher. Same way he beat him two weeks ago. He's got it locked in. Deuce is too far from the ropes. On his back, it's hard for him to crawl. And Drew trying to prevent the Kiwi Buzzsaws from getting involved. And hold on a moment. Hold the fuck on. You already had your attempt, boy. <laughs> you already had your fucking attempt. It got broken up. Deal with it. Gotta hate the fucking lag on this shit. There we go. I hate how long it takes to load the ability to, like, select things in the pause menu on this fucking game. Looking for a stop. Dude's able to avoid it. Instead, kicks to the gut. Setting up here. Lifts him up. Oh, and just power bombs him down. Lifts him back up. Wait a second. Into a Samoan drop. Deuce is such a powerful athlete. Looking for a right hand. Cody able to avoid it. Instead, looking for a flatliner. Deuce reverses. And now Deuce pulls him in for a belly to belly. Trying to take out the arm. Stomps to the head. Picks Cody up. Someone's getting their ass beat on the outside. I'm going to guess it's probably Drew. Cody said bring it on. And Deuce has officially brung it with that DDT. Tag made now to TJ Porter, who's probably just going to go for the pin, right? Oh, no. Apparently not. TJ rocking Cody with those forearms. Setting up now. Oh, my God. Looking for a gosh pile driver. Center of the ring. Goes for the pin. 
but Drew breaking things up. And Drew able to fight for you from that hold. You can see the blood. Oh my god, what a knee. You can see the blood pouring from the bridge of Drew Campbell's nose. Not entirely sure what caused it. Perhaps his altercation outside the ring with the Kiwi Buzzsaws a moment ago. But Cody continuing to fight on against TJ here. Takes him down to the arm drag. And now setting up trying to shatter his shoulder. As he sends it right into the canvas. And now from the center of the ring. Looking for the Border City stretcher on TJ. But no, Deuce breaking things up. Is he just going to break it up? Alright. I didn't get in there and fucking break things up myself that time. Just because I figured either Deuce or Devin had it that time. But either way. Cody now setting up here, looking for that front flip. DD2. No, wait a minute. TJ reverses into a back body drop. And now unloading with these forearms once again has him rocked. And that is the setup for the gosh pile driver once again. Into the cover, has that leg hooked. And no, only a two count. TJ off the middle rope with a diving splash to the back. Cody is just out, but somehow persisting in this one. Now Deuce Legal scrubbing Cody's face into the canvas and drops an elbow across the back. Cody back up to his feet. Baseman drop kicks to the bad knee. Gonna try to bring him back up. Deuce reverses. Able to avoid the right. And now brings Deuce down to the flatliner. Picks him right back up. Knee to the gut. Oh, wait a second. Same bringing it on. Deuce. Knife and chop. Kicks to the gut. Lifts him up. And Deuce is wild. Now the cover. Will that finally do it for Cody Campbell? No, only a two count. How is he still going? Deuce tags in the heavy artillery to get the job done here tonight. And Devin Porter is calling for the end here. Has him by the throat. No! Devin looking for that Punisher bomb, but Cody Campbell had an answer for it. Instead, Cody looking to tap out the big man. The Border City stretcher is locked in. But now it's TJ breaking things up. I fucking hate that they keep on going for the cover after a fucking submission gets broken up. It pains me, dude. It fucking pains me. It's just so fucking annoying. Fueled by the will of gods. Honest, at this point. And wait a second, he's got one more in him. Locks the big man back into the Border City stretcher. Will Devin... Devin Porter taps! Devin Porter taps out. The Campbell Club have overcome the odds. Yeah, where the hell is Deuce? Where the fuck was he during that? I figured he was on the apron, but like then it kind of panned over and he wasn't there. De <laughs> Devin Porter, notoriously weak arms. My god, I did not, did not expect the Campbell Club to come out on top in this one. I thought the odds were going to be too much for them to overcome, but they have proven me wrong. The Border City Stretcher claims yet another victim here tonight as Devin Porter is forced to submit to it. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next match of the night. Stick with us because it is our second of three title matches. And then, of course, after this one, we will have our main event of the evening. But for now, our United States Women's Championship will be on the line as Izzy Phelps challenges Selena Dominguez.
In the meantime, let me go ahead and pay the bets out real quick. Fucking fantastic ass match right there, dude. Holy fuck. Paying out fucking three for that one. Brian, congratulations. Everyone's going into the Motor City Stretcher. No, it's, it's the Border City Stretcher, Brendan. The Border City Stretcher. And if anyone's wondering why it's called that, uh, what well, I believe it's Alex Shelley has the Border City Stretch, which is the, which is essentially the Gargano Escape. Now, since Alex Shelley is from Detroit, or at least the Detroit area, uh, and he has the Border City Stretch, which is a, a fucking reference to like somewhere around Detroit. The Campbell Club, the Campbells are from Ann Arbor, Michigan. So the story there is that uh, Cody essentially got the Border City Stretch from Alex Shelley, but then added his own twist to it where he captured the arms as well. And since it's, you know, since it's basically the Border City Stretch, but improved, it's the Border City Stretcher, you know? Yeah, Border City Stretcher. Border City Stretch. Because, like, somewhere around here, Brendan, somewhere around Detroit, there's, uh, like, a place called, like, the Border City. I fucking looked into, like, six months ago or something, so I fucking forget exactly the lore behind the Border City stretch. But, actually, I can fucking look it up real quick. Okay, yeah, fucking, uh, Border City, USA. It's a cold storage facility in St. Aubin, Hamtrak, Michigan. Well, in Hamtrag, Michigan, St. Albans is the part of the street here, apparently. <laughs> Just a quick little Google search. Uh, let's see here. Alright, let's go ahead and get our next match going, though. Like I said, we have Izzy Phelps taking on Selena Dominguez for the United States Women's Championship. So let's go ahead and get it on. Oh, now that is something I didn't know, Brendan, about uh, South of Heaven. I just always thought it was a really fucking cool name and uh, just sort of out of the way uh, version of calling something hell, you know? <laughs> yeah, also, that's what the, what the fuck I'm saying. I was about to say something about it. Like, now not Greg Hamilton's fucking doing announcements. I feel like it has something to do with title matches. Like, if there's a title match on the card, he just doesn't do any fucking other announcements. This goes to show how shitty this game was made. But bets have started for this one. Izzy Phelps making her way down to the ring. She has been waiting for this opportunity ever since she lost the championship to Selena Dominguez a few months ago. Now, Selena Dominguez became champion on the March 5th episode of Motor City Wrestling. She has since gone on to reign for 130 days, becoming the second longest reigning U.S. champion in UPWA's history. Only 85 days now behind Mandy. But her reign could come to an end here tonight. At the hands of Izzy Phelps. And there she is, the United States Women's Champion herself, Selena Dominguez. Now initially, Izzy Phelps merely was victorious in a match against Jessica Taylor where it was very much implied that those two who were at the top of the division, whoever won that match would more than likely be going on 
to fight for the U.S. Women's Championship. Sure enough, Izzy Phelps won that match under controversial, uh, under controversial circumstances, nonetheless. But she won the match, and she was then targeted by La Hija del Diablo. And now the time has finally come for Selena Dominguez to defend that U.S. Women's Championship. You know, the thing about Selena Dominguez's entrance is that as awesome as I think it is, and as much as I, th I feel it fits her character, as badass as this entrance is and all that shit. My god, do I have to fucking fill a lot of space. Fill a lot of dead air. Just talking about, you know, the match. <laughs> and I was reminded, reminded, reminded of that last week when Izzy Phelps and Jessica Taylor t uh, took on the team of Emily Sharp and Selena Dominguez last week. That was Dominguez's very first match since Soul Survivor. And of course, back at Soul Survivor, Dominguez faced off against the UPWA Women's Champion, Akane Tanaka, in a losing effort. So much like Tyler Van Diver earlier tonight, Selena, Selena Dominguez, she needs this victory to remind everybody why she is the champion of Motor City Wrestling. Introducing the challenger from Raleigh, North Carolina, Dizzy Phelps. And introducing the champion from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, she is the United States Women's Champion, Selena Dominguez. Very interesting detail about these two's uh, rankings here in the UPWA. Selena Dominguez ranked at number 10. Phelps ranked at 11. Here on MCW, that is. As far as the overall UPWA records are, are concerned, Dominguez is number 17. Phelps is number 18. The reason that their ranks are so close in both of those divisions is because they have an equal record of six wins and six losses. But the reason that Dominguez is higher up on that uh, ranking than Izzy Phelps is because while they do have an equal number of overall wins, Selena Dominguez has a lower number of overall losses in her entire UPW career compared to Izzy Phelps. But that's enough talk about the paper, about the tail of the tape. This match has begun, and Dominguez off to a good start there. Phelps looking to shut her down, but Dominguez quickly turns the tide back into her favor. Phelps trying to fight back. Couple of kicks here. Oh, and takes the champion down. Now Phelps off the middle turnbuckle. Off the top turnbuckle. Oh, my God, what a moonsault there. Dominguez trying to get out of the way, but it looked like she may have hurt herself even more in doing so. What's with those fucking blank signs in the audience? People just fucking brought sheets of paper to uh, MCV tonight, apparently. Oh! Nice monkey flip there from, uh, from Izzy Phelps there a moment ago. But Dominguez able to shove her away, able to avoid that attempted offense. Now a leg drop across the leg. Full mount over Izzy Phelps, unloading these right hands into the face and a quick stomp for good measure. But still not finished. No, Phelps saw it coming that time. Turns around, gives her a couple of forearms. Not going to pick her up. Nope. Kicks to the gut. Oh, but a flying forearm from Phelps. And another one. And now looking for the Pele kick. This is the same sequence that she defeated Jessica Taylor with a few weeks ago on MCW. But only gets a two count here tonight. Uh -huh. 
And now Phelps. Going to deliver the twist of fate in the middle of the ring. Only a two count. Izzy Phelps, she has been chomping at the bit for her opportunity to regain the Women's Championship for the past 130 days. She has an opportunity to do exactly that here tonight. Delivers the Phoenix, Phoenix Splash. Will that do it for the champion? And it's over. Izzy Phelps wins back the United States Women's Championship here tonight. Selena Dominguez had a great run as U.S. Women's Champion. But as of tonight, her time in the sun has come to an end. Izzy Phelps is now a two-time U.S. Champion. But ladies and gentlemen, we have seen one title change hands tonight. And we've seen one title remain around the waist of the man who walked in with it but now we are going to get set for our third and final title match of the night as we get our main event ready for you folks at home so without any further ado let's go ahead and get to it let's stop wasting time coming up next we have los hermanos rodriguez taking on strength and power and also taking on blood money in a triple threat elimination tag team match where Six men will enter, three teams will participate, but only one team will walk out with the UPW, UPWA Tag Team Championship. Alright, not gonna lie, that fucking US Women's title match could have been better. Could have been better, but you know what, it is what it is. We've had, we've had a bunch of good matches so far. I'm not surprised that we had one done. Uh, let's see, Izzy Phelps going to get the win. I'll go ahead and pay you guys out real quick. Congratulations, Brian. Of course, I should have known he'd be betting on the fucking Jeff Hardy girl. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let me go ahead and uh, update this word real quick. Izzy Phelps officially your new United States Women's Champion, but now, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event of the evening. Triple Threat Elimination Tag Match. Los Hermanos Rodriguez, Strength in Power, and Blood Money all set to collide for the UPWA Tag Team Championship. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to it. Eventually, that is. Now, I think... That when this matchup was originally announced, I believe we all figured that it would be Aztexico representing La Armada del Mexico in this UPWA Tag Team Championship match. However, Pedro Rodriguez insisted that he and Marco be the ones to bring Tag Team Gold to La Armada. Pedro and Marco teamed up for the very first time in nearly 10 years two weeks ago to defeat Strength and Power. And they... Well, they 
just didn't lose a, a single inch of their success, it seemed like. It was just like riding a bike for these two. And so, with that in mind, and the fact that they haven't held Tag Team Gold in even longer than those almost 10 years, Peter Rodriguez, he wanted to team up with his brother to win the UPW Tag Team titles here tonight. And so, it will be Los Hermanos Rodriguez representing La Armada del Mexico. But it's not going to be an easy feat. While two weeks ago, they defeated Strength in Power in Tag Team Action in two-on-two -two form tonight. Blood money will be thrown into the mix. And of course, so will the UPW Tag Team titles. And there they are, the UPW Tag Team Champions. Now, unlike the other two champions who had to defend earlier tonight, like I mentioned, Tyler Van Diver and Selena Dominguez, they were both unsuccessful in their matches as Soul Survivor in their champion versus champion matches. Blood Money, on the other hand, while they had a very unique champion versus champion match, as the entire Blood Money faction went up against all of Darkness Incarnate. Blood Money, they were the only champions to win their match for MCW. On top of that, Blood Money, they have reigned for 130 days as UPW Tag Team Champions. They are currently the third longest reigning champions in history. Just 54 days behind Silver and Gold. And 143 days behind Aztexico. I forgot Deeper was a champion. I figured it was Oxen and Brutus. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really blame you. I I forget exactly why I made Deaver one of the champions. I forget exactly why I, I had him team up with Brutus. But either way, Deaver and Brutus have to defend not only against Los Hermanos Rodriguez, but of course against these two individuals as well. Now, originally, it was La Armada del Mexico that staked their claim at the U3 Tag Team titles when they arrived on the scene on MCW three weeks ago. But strength and power have had their have had a bone to pick with Pedro Rodriguez ever since he turned his back on Kenny and Johnny Nightblade back at Soul Survivor. And their rivalry with Pedro Rodriguez and La Armada by extension has carried into this feud over the UPW Tag Team titles. And so whether it's by luck or because they deserve it, Strength and Power will be competing against both these other two teams tonight for those UPW Tag Team titles in this Elimination Triple Threat Tag Team match. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to throw this out into the universe real quick. I have a bad fucking feeling. I just have a bad feeling that uh, the fucking titles, for some reason, aren't even on the line tonight. I just feel like this game's pulling some bullshit and just didn't put the fucking championships on the line. But, either way, rest assured that whoever wins this match will be the EPM Tag Team, cha tag team Champions. Marco Rodriguez going right after Brian Brutus, Chris Hunter, and Peter Rodriguez duking it out over there, there in the back. And Damian Deaver, meanwhile, putting Joe Sullivan in the tree of woe currently. There's going to be a whole lot of action to keep up with in this match. Remember, pinfalls and submissions can only occur inside the ring. 
if any of these competitors go go to the outside, go to ringside, they are ineligible for scoring a pinfall or submission or being eliminated by such. But now strength and power ganging up on Joe Sullivan here. Brian Brutus and Mark Ro uh, Peter Rodriguez both taken out of the equation currently. And that leaves Chris Hunter to deal with Damian Deaver and Joe Sullivan and Marco Rodriguez to go after each other. Time for destruction, indeed. I've definitely been looking forward to this matchup ever since. This, this is just me talking right here. I've been looking forward to this matchup, like, for a couple of weeks now. I've known that this is the direction that I was taking this shit for a while, and I'm fucking glad that, like, it's finally happening here. Oh, pop-up cutter there by Marco Rodriguez. Gonna go for the cover on Joe Sullivan. Look for the early elimination of the Sonoran Savage. Chris Hunter, meanwhile, doesn't even realize the pin's taking place, but Joe Sullivan luckily able to kick out. And now Hunter just unloading these right hands, trying to bust Deaver open here. Drops a fist across the face. Sullivan, meanwhile, looking for a... I believe he may have just hit his uh, Sonoran fly. I'm not entirely sure because Kevin Dunn's bullshit right now. <laughs> now. I mentioned that pinfall and submission has to take place inside the ring, but currently there are no teams in the ring. Everybody's at ringside apart from Brian Brutus now. Joe Sullivan with a choke bomb to Marco. Pedro going to get back inside and face Brutus one-on-one. -on -one. No, gets sent over the top rope once again. And now Brutus is going to unload these clubbing blows across the chest of the Master Manipulator. Damian Deaver, meanwhile, looking for a, a Falcon Arrow on the floor to Joe Sullivan. Marco Rodriguez, well, Brian Brutus, rather, stomps at the back of the knee of Pedro. Damian Deaver once again, look, no, this time a snap suplex. Marco back inside, Joe Sullivan going to join him. And Marco setting him up here. Looking here for a pop-up cutter. Delivers it for a second time. Now going to go for the pin here. Hook the outside leg. Shoulders are down. And only a two count. Marco picking Joe Sullivan back up. Looking for Shattered Shadows. Sullivan able to get over Marco Rodriguez, force him to go for a suplex instead. And is ultimately able to reverse into a German suplex. Now the Sonoran Savage in control over El Mariposa Muerto. As Sullivan now goes to the top turnbuckle, what could he be thinking here? Off the top rope! Doesn't quite get all of that cross body, but gets enough of it to bring Marco down and now setting him up here from behind looking for the Southern Lights driver and Marco Rodriguez's night could be coming to an end here as Joe Sullivan goes for the pin but no Marco able to kick out at the count of two keep himself alive in this contest but Joe Sullivan ain't having it looking for it once again Delivers another Southern Lights driver. Going for the pin again. Hooks the outside leg. And still only a two count. Damien Deaver, meanwhile, apparently a couple of... Well, a couple of elbow drops and a uh, face wash. And now a double stump to the face. Oh, and what a back body drop there from Deaver. Marco Rodriguez back inside the ring. Could be looking for a third time on Joe Sullivan to deliver that pop-up cutter. And now gonna drag Sullivan away from those ropes. Because apparently rope break is probably on in this match. Goes for the cover in the center of the ring on the Snoran Savage. But only a two count, thank God, because Kevin Dunn just decided to cut to Damien Deaver again right there. Now Sullivan getting himself back up, but just eats a missile drop kick off the ropes. Marco brings him back up and brings him back down with a flatline. Now unloading these 
Knee strikes into the chest of Joe Sullivan. They could be looking to put him away once again here. No. Joe with a reversal. And now a Russian leg sweep taken marker down. Now I have to give Blood Money some credit right now. They've both members have stayed outside the ring for most of this matchup. Now while they uh, cannot win this matchup early on, they can certainly lose it early if one of them or both of them gets eliminated. They said they'd rather have Marco Rodriguez do the hard work of eliminating Joe Sullivan with some shattered shadows. Goes for the cover. And only a two count still. Yet another Falcon arrow from Damian Deaver. Sullivan picks Marco up, delivers a, a Sonoran fly. And a spear. Center of the ring, shoulders are down. And just like that, Marco Rodriguez is gone. We are down to five in this contest. And the odds are not in Los Hermanos' favor. But Joe Sullivan and Chris Hunter looking to use their numbers advantage against Damian Deaver right now. Brian Brutus preoccupied on the outside. It's some eyes tell lies from Pedro Rodriguez. Where's picture when <laughs> picture when we honestly dude? Bro, that would be so fucking dope if there was, like, a split screen option in 2K. So you could focus on multiple fucking parts of the match happening at once. That'd be fucking sweet as hell. And strength and power are just beating the shit out of Damian Diva right now. Peter Rodriguez, meanwhile, keeping Brian Brutus occupied at ringside. I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but... Either way, I... I I do see obliteration sort of working in unison here. Even if Pedro Rodriguez is no longer part of that group. Well, I say that, but Chris Hunter and Joe Sullivan can't really seem to get on the same page. They both want to attack Damian Deaver. But neither is really letting the other do it. <laughs> Joe Sullivan now from behind. Deaver with a back elbow. Has Sullivan stunned for a moment. But now Chris Hunter back into the fold. From behind looking for a back suplex. Gets all of it. Deaver taking down Sullivan. Now kick to the gut. No broken up by Hunter. And Sullivan from behind looking for a shin breaker to Deaver. And Hunter just mounting over Deaver, trying to unload those lefts. Joe Sullivan has an idea of his own backbreaker. You know, I liked how in 2K19, if the AI were both working on the same guy, one of them would just sit back and let the other do his work. I, I really appreciate how in 2K22 they took that feature out and just let the fucking AI keep on interrupting each other instead. Makes for much more compelling television. Oh, Chris Hunter drops him down. Oh, and a punch right to the face. Deaver back up to his feet. Joe Sullivan looking to take advantage with a Russian leg sweep. Now going for the cover. Please be it, mercifully. No Deaver able to kick out, but Chris Hunter... No, wait, reverse... But now he has to face the wrath of Joe Sullivan. And wait a second from behind. Setting up here for the Blood Diamond. And into the cover. And Chris Hunter's had enough of Joe Sullivan. Just lets him get eliminated there. But now Chris Hunter has to deal with Damian Deaver on his own. Looking for the Blood Diamond again. Hunter able to reverse it that time. Oh, and a KO punch to Deaver. Into the cover. Has the leg hooked. And only a two count. Now 
Looking for another KO punch. Deaver able to avoid that one. Has Hunter rocked against the ropes here. And Hunter fighting back. Right hand catches Deaver. Deaver with a reversal. And now setting up. Snapmare takes him down. Oh! Sort of a face wash there. Meanwhile, Brian Brutus on the outside tapping out to Pedro Rodriguez, but not eliminated since it did not occur inside the ring. Damian Deaver now looking to get rid of Chris Hunter. Kicks to the gut. Turns him around. And delivers another Blood Diamond. Into the cover goes Chris Hunter. And that is it for Strength in Power. We are down to one. We are down to two teams in this matchup. And it is now a two-on-one handicap match for Pedro Rodriguez to overcome. And it's not looking good as he gets power slammed on literal concrete. Jamie Deaver now has a, has a last chance re locked in on Pedro Rodriguez on the floor. Rodriguez refusing to tap out here, it seems. No way to able to break the hold. Punch right to the forehead to break things up, but now he has to deal with Brian Brutus. Has him stunned with a kick to the gut, but Brutus right back at it with a gut buster. And now just like Damien Deaver a moment ago, Peter Rodriguez faces a numbers game. Brutus looking for a torch rack of some sort. Rodriguez able to get out of the way. But now look, taking a double underhook powerbomb from Damian Deaver on the floor. Brian Brutus here has the arm hip drop to the shoulder. And now Deaver setting Rodriguez up. Kick to the gut. And another one still has a hold of that wrist. Pulls him in for a short on clothesline. And now just curb stomping away at the chest. Right on the concrete. Ryan Brood is not finished though. Double leg drop. Picks Rodriguez up, but Brood no Deaver. Deaver looking now for a gourd buster. Taking the luchador down. Oh, and follows up with a boot. Now, <laughs> Damian Deaver and Brian Brutus, they've got to be enjoying this right now. They've been wanting to get at Pedro Rodriguez. Really all of La Armada for weeks. But especially Pedro Rodriguez as he just takes a full-on side slam onto the concrete. At what point should I just take control of somebody and move this whole thing back to the ring? Because I feel like they're just getting farther from the ring as this goes on. Oh, uh, Rodriguez rolls through. Able to avoid disaster there. Now has a hold of Deaver. Rakes the eyes. But now Brutus has him again. Setting him up. Oh, it right into a backbreaker. Okay, yeah, they're actually getting farther from the ring. There is no attempt at all to get back to the ring. I think next time Pedro reverses something, I'm just going to go ahead and take control of him and fucking try to run back. At this point, I feel like that's the best course of action. Deaver with a kick to the gut, and another one still has that wrist, and once again pulls him in for a short arm clothesline. Brian Brutus now. Stomp right to the gut and just steps over the master manipulator. Damian Deaver again. This is just how blood money does their work. I guess so. I guess so. They are the mafia, after all. The main event mafia, if you will. Okay. And I think this might be my opening. Maybe not. Brian Brutus just tossing Peter Rodriguez around. Rodriguez back up to, his, to a knee. Trying to avoid it. But now Northern Light Suplex takes down Deaver. Still has Brutus to worry about though and gets slammed face first into the concrete. 
Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? This is it. This is my fucking moment. Let me just go ahead and take control of Pedro. And nope, never mind. Turns out he was going for a fucking move. That's wonderful. Never mind. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, switch this back over here real quick. And there we go. Back to business. A kick to the gut. Deaver though. Oh, with a forearm. And Rodriguez is just stunned on his feet after that one. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I'm just thinking of Jordan right now, Brent. <laughs> My god, Brutus is beating the fuck out of Pedro right now. And, oh man, what a stomp. Picks him back up, and Brutus just carrying him around like a ragdoll. Slams Rodriguez back into the floor. Now picks him up, and tosses him a little closer to the ring. Okay, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Double team action here from Brutus and Deaver. This is what they're all about. Oh, but a vicious backbreaker there from Brutus. And now Deaver has the arm tied up and pulls back on the other one going after Rodriguez's shoulders. And now going to stomp away at the hand on the floor here. Just want to go ahead and fucking welcome anybody who's just tuning in, tuning in to this special two and a half hour edition of Motor City Wrestling where we're going to go ahead and just watch Pedro Rodriguez get the shit beaten out of him for, an, uh, for a full hour and a half. Uh, Pedro fighting back. Unloading these shots. Oh! And a Pele taking Brutus down, but he's still got Deaver to worry about. Kick to the gut. And another one. And a short on closing. Rodriguez goes back up to his feet. Oh my god, what a what a belly to belly suplex there from Brian Brutus and knows Rat who's fucked with the lights again. <laughs> okay, lights are back on. Lights are oh, lights are off. Oh Rodriguez, quick jab, another one, kick, another kick, and a roundhouse takes Brutus down. But he's still got Deaver to worry about again. Oh, and Deaver with a wishbone. Right to the fingers. Still not done. Breaking up. Trying to break him again. Now a kick to the gut. A couple of forearms as well. Double underhook suplex. Going to pick Rodriguez up. A kick to the gut. And Brutus. Lifting Rodriguez up into the military press, drops him down into a gut buster. Dude, if Pedro Rodriguez somehow fucking comes back from this. And now Brutus lifts Rodriguez up into a stretch muffler. Trying to take out his ability to hit that eyes tell lies knee strike. Oh, and just lets him go. Just drops him back down to the floor. And now Brutus finally brings him back inside where this match can hopefully come to a fucking end. <laughs> Brutus picks him up. And now Blood... No, wait a second. Deaver. Oh! Brings him down to that face buster going for the cover. And only a two count. Picks him right back up. But Brutus from behind, looking for a torture act of some sort. Rodriguez reverses it. Brutus breaking things up. And pulls him in for a gut wrench. Rodriguez again able to get out of the way. And takes down Brutus with a neck breaker. Oh, but gets caught by Deaver. Looking for the Blood Diamond. Center of the ring, shoulders are down. And still only a two count. But Deaver, he's got one more left in the tank. Kicks to the gut once again. And delivers a yet another blood diamond. Has the leg hooked. Shoulders are down. And that's all she wrote. No, it's not. Oh. Wait a second. Goes out the back door. Kicks to the back of the knee. And Rodriguez 
La guillotina! La guillotina! Is Deaver gonna tap? Deaver's tapped! It is a one-on-one! -on -one. The champion has been eliminated! Okay, I guess that confirms that it's a title match. Oh my god, it is a one-on-one -on -one match now. Pedro Rodriguez kicked out of a diamond in a in the rough. As well as well as two blood diamonds. Locked in La Guillotina. And submitted the leader of the Blood Money faction. Now Brian Brutus trying to break Rodriguez in half with this camel clutch. But it's on the outside. Even if Rodriguez taps, it doesn't matter. Oh, sends some shoulder first into the canvas. And what a statement win in the career of Brian Brutus this would be if he were to pin Pedro Rodriguez here tonight. Pedro Rodriguez, if he can pin Brian Brutus meanwhile, he will become the first Grand Slam champion in UPW history. Eyes tell lies, goes for the cover, and that's it! Pedro Rodriguez has won the UPWA Tag Team Championships. I don't know how the hell he just did that. Marco Rodriguez was the very first man eliminated in this contest. Both members of Strength and Power would soon follow suit. And Marco's also there. Team champion, Pedro Rodriguez. I, okay, Pedro Rodriguez is the new tag team champions, not Marco, apparently. After Strength and Power was eliminated, it was a two-on-one handicap match for Pedro Rodriguez to overcome. But after he took out Damian Deaver with La Guillotina, Brian Brutus tried to wear him down on the outside, but after he threw him back inside the ring, Pedro, from out of nowhere, hit Eyes Tell Lies to win the UPWA Tag Team Championship alongside his brother Marco. For the first time in 10 years, Los Hermanos Rodriguez hold Tag Team Gold in a wrestling promotion. And for the very first time in UPWA's history, in over three and a half years, we have crowned a Grand Slam Champion. My fucking god, what a show! I don't know how the hell XTW Relentless tops this tomorrow night. Alex Rude is a triple crown champion. Alex Rude has never held the uh, World Hardcore Championship. He is a former UP3 champion, a former European champion, and a former UP3 tag team champion, and a former World Tag Team champion. But Alex Rude never held the World Hardcore title, so he could never he never became a Grand Slam champion. The only other man to become a, a triple crown champion was Sean Goldman as he's held the UPWA World Hardcore and UPWA Tag Team Championships. But Pedro Rodriguez, he is the first, the first ever UPWA Champion, the inaugural UPWA Champion, the first man to hold the title three times. He's a former World Hardcore Champion, a former European Champion. He's won the Royal Rumble, he's won the main event of Soul Survivor. And now, he is the first Grand Slam champion in UP Degrees history. What a fucking night. <laughs> but what w La Armada del Mexico, they... They claimed, Peter Rodriguez claimed when they arrived on the scene three months ago, three weeks ago rather, that they were here on MCW to do what he never could do, and that's conquer the blue and white brand. 
now that he has the UPW Tag Team Championship. I think La Armada are on their way to doing exactly that. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to go ahead and thank you all for being here tonight. This is a fucking very long episode of Motor City Wrestling, probably because of the fact that we had not one, not two, but technically three tag team matches on the show. Usually we have two at most. Usually we only have one, just to keep the show kind of short. Keep it at just one hour. But the women's tag match earlier, the handicap match earlier, and then of course this triple threat tag team match really made us go long here tonight. <laughs> but honestly, I think it was very appropriate. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is where we're going to go ahead and have to call it. Make sure you stick around, though, because here in just a moment, we're going to go ahead and give Hunter Dillon a raid. All right, that man's streaming some real deal casino millionaires club, whatever the fuck that is. But we all know Hunter. We've fucking seen this shit before. He does some, uh, cool-ass game show stuff. He runs Jeopardy. He fucking... I think... No. I don't, I don't think he runs Jeopardy. I know he does, uh... He does Millionaire. I'm pretty sure he's on Wheel of Fortune at least once. I don't know. He's, he's a big fucking game show enthusiast. He does Monopoly too. And shit. He also loves board games and shit like that. But. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and give him a raid in just a second. But before we do, let me go ahead and thank, e thank each and every one of you guys real quick. Once again, for tuning into Motor City Wrestling episode 172. Live from. For the life of me, I cannot fucking remember where the hell <laughs> we're emanating from tonight. Does anybody know where the fucking show's from tonight? California. Somewhere in Cal Long Beach, California, I believe it is. MCW 172 live from Long Beach, California. And if I'm wrong, well then, it is what it is. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night for XTW Relentless. Our first pay-per-view on 2K22. But until next time... This has been your boy Doug the Dog 6, and I am signing off. You guys have a fucking wonderful night. You guys have a fucking wonderful Thursday, a happy Thursday, if you will. And I will fucking see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, catch you guys later. Have a good night, everybody.